Okay, welcome to one of my very first Lumion live streaming tests. I hope this to be the future of getting content and tutorials out to you guys much quicker. Um, it's going to be a lot less polished than the things I've put together, but that's a good thing and it'll get better. The topic I want to cover in this quick test is how to simply bring substances in to Lumion. I think there's a lot of confusion around when I say substance a lot of people think of the software substance designer and substance painter let's look go on the internet really quick Got algorithmic the creator of these substance softwares and so you'll see substance painter which is a great application for painting onto existing 3D unwrapped models. Uh, I've used it quite a bit before. It's an incredible program. Unfortunately, modeling in SketchUp, I don't, do, I, I don't have the privilege or the benefit of having all my models UV unwrapped the way I would like to. But it is definitely a, a powerful tool, especially for those who, who do character modeling. And I, and I hope to use it uh, soon in the future. And the other one is Substance Designer, which is really what we're kind of taking advantage of here. The thing is, I never actually learned how to create, how to use Substance Designer. I haven't, I've seen it used. I kind of understand the premise, but I haven't actually taken the time to learn and create my own materials. And the idea of this is that Substance lets you create materials entirely from scratch as in from nothing uh, it's got, it's hard to explain you get an idea of some of these images here it's a lot of node based um, things combining different effects different blurs different wavy patterns and controlling those to create the material you want so when you're done with that what you get is an dot s b s a r i call it dot spar s bar is what I kind of what I tell it say in my mind now that I've said it, it it's actually s s bar anyways that's the format we're gonna be working with I've been following substance for years and I just haven't really found a real way to bring it in to art my architectural renderings or Lumion it was just kind of a, a pipe dream for one day in the future if I had time to do really cool stuff but then, at Aldus University, I met with Substance, and that's when they just introduced their Substance Source, and they explained to me this was exactly a, like a response to people like me who would like to use Substance in the architectural archvis, you know, community, but just weren't. Weren't, it didn't have time to learn all this, all the, all the things in the in these other engines or all these other uh, softwares, and so what they've done is collected all of the best substances people have created before, so you can just browse and download. If that's what I'm going to show off today, I, I went a little more in depth than I expected, but I have it open here. This is Substance Source. I can put this link in the description for you guys to jump right into it. I'm pretty sure anyone can just view it. So it's a, a library that is ever growing. Right now there's uh, 1,100 materials. They just dumped 100 more, and I think they're going to be dumping several more over the next course of the next couple years. It just started about a year ago. And what we have here is categorized materials. So we go into fabric, we have lots of different fabrics in here that we can browse and this gives us some rendered previews from iRay and these this is a quick sample of what each map kind of looks like so already you can kind of get an idea of what it's going to look like and there's variations and that's the other thing I want to explain these S bars are much more powerful than just images they're not just okay that looks good download a lot of these, depending on the level of detail the people who put into them, you could get 
hundreds of distinct different materials out of one S bar. Some are actually open and export and some are very intricate. And I'm going to show that off as we download some. Another really great thing is you can view preview these in 3D. I love this. This is all you really need to really get an idea of how light is going to affect this interactively. This is a fabric so not the greatest example. But let's go over to a metal. Get one of these beautiful Let's see, let's do this gold leaf waste. Now, if I go into view in 3D, we're really going to be able to get an idea of how this is going to reflect in light. Yeah. One more. I want something. Here we go. Something with the kind of scratches on it. That really brings that realism to life. There you go. You see that little that brushed look the imperfect reflection surface that's everything that makes such a huge difference when it can be done right it is a tricky balance what I'm going to show really quick in this first tutorial no you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna give it all away I'm gonna talk about um, glossiness maps in Lumion how we can get to that level but I only have time for probably one or two examples. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go into these free assets because I'm pretty sure I should be able to share these. I should be able to have these up for you guys to be able to download and open. So when you download these, you, you download an S bar, S, a substance. I'm going to call it a substance archive. And you need a special software to download it. I will put this link in the description as well. The software is called Substance Player and this one's free. Entirely free, meant specifically for opening substances. So that's the substance you download and it opens up in here. And we're gonna see this firsthand right now. So let's go ahead and try this leather. So you click on this and what's interesting to note, download here is the SBAR file. And this SBS is actually the substance designer file that they created this from. So you could actually go in and manipulate the source. Not all of them have this. I don't know that level of detail yet, so it doesn't mean anything to me, but it's just nice to know that you can actually go back and manipulate the core of the substance. We're just getting the end product here. So I'm going to download leather fine touch is what this one's called and you see it's a substance archive so it's downloaded right here and I'm gonna go ahead and open it and one thing you'll notice too 12 kilobytes this is procedural as in it's not just pixels with wasted information I pick you know, bitmaps are extremely heavy they're extremely heavy and inefficient ways of showing images. But when you have something that's procedural or done by the computer, it's also a lot like vector. It's extremely small, but from it we can pull out really big JPEGs, really or really big bitmaps or PNGs, whatever file we go we go from. I promise these are gonna get smoother in the future. Alright, so here is substance player so it defaulted for some reason to this flat plane I actually like to see it as a rounded cube and by holding control and shift I can just rotate the light around it I don't want to get too much into details there's quite a bit of controls a lot of controls in here but I want to show you really simply at first how do we get this into Lumion? So the important thing here, these are the, the parameters. And this one actually has some ability to manipul be, be manipulated. The biggest thing here is output size. It's set to 512 by 512, which is pretty low. I would recommend putting at least a thousand. And we see, if we get up close, we can see the difference there. You can go up to 2000 by 2000 even more refined 
you have 4,000 by 4,000. And if you have enough RAM on your graphics card, you can go up to 8. It requires about 8 or 9 gigs of VRAM. And I have 11 on mine. So it actually does, I'll prove that it actually does go to 8K by 8K, which is ridiculous. You'll never need to go that high. I, I push 4K in my animation, but I've done several tests and you can't actually tell the difference. I would, I would recommend 2K for high quality. And if you want to go insane, you're going to go really close to the material, you could try 4K. It just starts getting pretty heavy. You, you really will run. I run out of VRAM all the time in, in Lumion, and I don't need to. So that's explaining that. I actually want to jump back down to 512, just so we maybe a thousand, because I'm going to start editing this and show you how this can be manipulated. So this is leather roughness. This is just simply roughness. It's the same as like glossiness just reversed. That one's not really that tricky but here's some detail density. You can see some different little veins, folds, whatever you call that in leather, inner scale leather detail. So this one's, you know, this one's pretty minor rotation. There's just some minor things we can edit in there. And I wanted to show that off. We'll find some other ones that are much more intricate that make a huge difference. So I'm going to just do 2K. Another advantage too, really quick, is this randomized seed. What this will do is it'll use the similar parameters, but it'll randomize. I don't know how to explain it. Basically, you'll get a new variation. They'll grab it from a different area, and so we have a whole different material right here. They're, they're, not, really, they're not repeated. It's not just shifted over. There's some actual randomness going on. Okay. Now, really quick, I want to bring this into Lumion. We're going to go to Export Bitmap. So, first thing to do is the, the user interface is still ar archaic in this. There's some refining they need to do. But let's just go ahead and select our desktop in this case. I wouldn't recommend do that <laughs> doing that. And um, the format split is defaults to Targa. These are going to make Targa is great. It's going to make really heavy files though. Honestly, I just go to JPEG. Really, if I were to be full quality, I would say go PNG or something. But I, I just go JPEG and I haven't had an issue. Not yet. I I have a substance folder that's over 30 gigs now. And, so, and those are as JPEGs. So I'm fine with using JPEGs. Um, and... I'm creating videos that are going to talk about each one of these things, really, what they what they mean. But for the sake of simplicity here, we want diffuse. So I'll uncheck all. We want diffuse and normal right now. You know what? I'm going to do glossiness because I will explain that how to bring that to Lumion. But diffuse and normal, and glossiness, in this case, are the only things we need. So we just go to export. So it's rendering it. It's creating the bitmap from this procedural procedural texture, and you can see them right here. So let's go ahead and take a look at them. There you are. This is my my desktop. Most of it's all on this temp. Um, all right. So there's our normal map we created. There's the glossiness and diffuse. So let's just bring those into Lumion. So I have Lumion open. This is uh, Villa Wagner here. I think there's some minor modifications. I just grabbed something really quick and I set up some scenes here. Because what we're going to do is we're going to put the material on this, this area here. So I've just created some scenes already with effects different lighting angles kind of get an idea how this is going to look so first go to materials let's grab this it's called concrete wall and color map I'm going to go over this it's the same thing as diffuse same thing as base color uh, there's another one called um, Al, 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 
Alveda, and it's a little different, but it's the same idea. So let's go find our leather. It's going to be weird on the wall, on the special exterior wall. And uh, so I'm pretty sure any of you guys could have done that already. It, was, it had a colorization here. Let's just turn that off. And Lumion created a normal map by itself, which is very convenient and nice. But we have much better ones we can put in. Let's um, you get an idea, play at the scale. Probably something more like that. So there's our material. So I want you to notice that once you start adding reflectivity, that just adds a very, just makes it look very fake, not like leather, like it's just wallpaper or painted that. So let's go ahead and add that normal map. And there we really start to get that that texture of leather in there. The only thing that's really missing is having the reflectivity map correctly. A lot of times you only need this and honestly I would push this because the, the process of putting the glossiness into the alpha channel of the normal I will lose some people in that and that's okay. I hope to make that as simple as possible my next in upcoming tutorials. It's something that I've fought with for quite a long time but there you go that's a substance in Lumia. That's simple. We're going to try another one and then I will get into glossiness and how we get that into there. Let's go ahead and bring substance back up. At one point this is going to be butter smooth, I promise. Let's do this one. This one's an incredible substance. Um, I'm not going to put it on that wall though. I'm going to put it on the ground or something. So this one looks really, really good. Granted, how often we need this. Well, how often do we want mud steps? I, I don't know. It, it's it's great to have. It's a really good looking one. And so we're going to download it. Mud steps. Step marks. And open it up. Right. Here it is. So it defaults to 512, so lower resolution. Something like a thousand. You really start to see. So this one's a great one for showing the parameters. So we can change the amount of water. Water dirt density, how clean that water is. Pebbles. Twigs. Footprints, how many footprints there are. Leaves or not. And we can even change the color of the leaves. We're going to have red leaves. That's a very realistic red. And the color of the mud. We can have orange mud. Um, well, we're not. I would not do that. But definitely different shades of brown, and maybe some are more reddish, just more reddish mud out there. Anyways, we have control over that. Another cool thing is our presets in here. So other ones that people have been set up. In fact, they're in the preview here. See, there's this one's wet forest preset, tundra preset. So we have those here, wet forest. Let's do wet for us. Okay, let's bump it up to 2K. So yeah, it, it, this is one that it ends up looking really good. All right, so remember we go to export bitmap. We just want diffuse, normal, and gloss. Now I'll mention this now, and I'll go more into depth later on this, not in this stream. But when it comes to metals, you'll actually want the base color. You know, and I've still been researching and researching and trying to understand the exact difference between diffuse and base color. Most of the time, we just want to go for diffuse. Honestly, base color doesn't make too much of a difference. But when it comes to metals, diffuse is going to give you a, just a pure black, useless metal um, image. Whereas the base color will give it 
the silver looking the way it looks what, what you would expect all glossiness normal diffuse and then sometimes there's ambient occlusion another one that is useful that I'll explain how we can utilize that in Lumion all right so I'll change this move to change this to JPEG or that's your preference you know I mentioned to here one of these what it'll do is it'll export this dot s b s p r s which is basically this we actually I think we want the default one here but we could customize our perfect material in all the settings and then we could export it close this out and then say we want to do it at a higher resolution well we lost all those settings we don't remember exactly which ones they are this will actually export something you could actually just load in right here and you can you can load in uh, those settings with, with all these files and when you do this and you go to external this file just means I'll show you I, I'm gonna get better at these live streams this <laughs> If you wonder, this is why, <laughs> this is why I like my fully controlled environments. I'm just not really. I like to ramble on a lot, and this is definitely something I've spent a lot of time thinking about. So here's our maps, and then there's this SBSPRS. So we could. We could change all these values here. And then, oh wait, I want it just like it was. Go to presets, load, and there it is. Open, and is that it? Load. Well. Dang, I <laughs> guess it saved it here. I gotta look into that, I guess, because that worked for me every other time. Let's just pretend that worked. Anyways, we gotta get this to look like this in Lumion. And this is an example where you need, you absolutely need to have the glossiness map in there to create this effect. And I'm gonna show you what it looks like without it. So. Definitely not adding this to the wall here. We'll keep our leather wall. <laughs> Let's, eh, I'll add it. This is gonna be really weird. We're gonna add it right here. Do not judge me for making a mud pool area. My colonization's on. There we go. Lumion created its own normal map. Let's add our own. See, that'll make you Lumion. We have better. Now look at that, that really shows off that normal map is just really powerful. So the problem we're getting is it, it is reflective, but like everything's reflective and everything just looks wet. And we're getting these black lines that just kind of really start to make it a little fake. But I mean there it is on there. You know, it's like oh, okay we gotta turn this down, but now the the water is not reflecting so that's why we need glossiness maps so one reason I've steered away from this is I use Photoshop to do this and I understand not everyone has Photoshop Adobe is it can be pretty expensive I pay for it and I utilize the heck out of it and I, 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 I I actually really like their software. It's still loading up here. Okay. There is a way to do this with GIMP. I used to use GIMP before I had Photoshop, and I'm thinking I'm going to have to go back and learn how to do it again because I did used to do this with GIMP. So what I'm going to do is although you can add you can add channels into the diffuse and it gives you some pretty cool options. Again, this is going to be cleared up in my tutorials I'm working on right now which are very controlled and not sporadic like this. I add this to the diff the normal because the normal ch alpha channel is the glossiness channel which is perfect for what we're using. All right. 
so we're going to load okay let's do the mud first so we're gonna throw the mud normal on there and then we're going to do the glossiness and you know there's probably so many better ways of doing this but I just open them both and I'm gonna just go ahead and select this copy this image and instead of layers here we're gonna go to channels RGB red green blue well we need to add one that's an alpha now this had me scratching my head for a long time just bear with me it's another channel it's a channel for transparency that's already in the format so I hit control V so there's our map and it's in the alpha everything else is turned off when we turn it on Photoshop does this thing where it kind of shapes it and shades it in gray and red to see it on off now I'm going to explain this really quick that white means pure glossiness black which there isn't really any black on here but there's some darker colors means not glossy as in not re very reflective so the, the leaves aren't very reflective the mud has varying degrees of reflectiveness and, and then you, you have a stark contrast of the water which is exactly what, you, what we want there is something I do I gotta explain though I actually usually manipulate this a little bit more. Lumion, I, you know, I don't know if it's me or if it's Lumion. I, it, I do, it does seem like Lumion needs things to be exaggerated to really show up the way they do. Um, however, viewing this in Substance Player here, if we export those maps, and we brought those maps into Unreal Engine or Unity, it looks exactly like that. Those maps correlate perfectly uh, from what I've seen and what they've explained in my experience it correlates very well whereas Lumion you need to massage it a little bit but it's not too bad and so what I'll usually do is I'll export this as is and then I will manipulate a little bit and call it V2 and I just test them both out sometimes if you're really trying to get it just right I'll do even more more variations so that way you can see which one looks better because it's hard to preview this in your mind how the, and how Lumion's engine is going to render it. Okay, so there's a tricky part of exporting this. This got me, this tripped me up for a long time as well. Sorry, I'm going to export. You go to save as. We're going to stay in the desktop and we actually need to go into a format that lets you keep alpha channels. Believe it or not, alpha, PNG is not not what we want here what we want is 32 bit which means full quality a lot more ways of distinguishing the, the whites and grays and I go with Targa Targa here alpha channels checked you have to have that checked in Photoshop and I just happen to rename it gloss so I understand the difference we go to save and this is important too you want 32 bit and this doesn't make any difference really so and now let's go back to Lumion and we just have to reload it's a normal map remember this is a normal map the same normal map but with an alpha in the uh, or a glossiness in the alpha channel so this is it right here now watch the stark difference that we're going to get here now it's not showing up because the reflectivity needs to be turned up but as you can see here, notice water is very reflective, mud is not. Now it, it always takes some massaging in here and it's never consistent exactly what levels need to go up and then it just takes time. It, it takes some time to play with to kind of get it and I still don't get it. I kind of get it. We're going something along the lines of Around there. Look at that. Water's reflective. The mud is just barely. So that's the power that does there. Without it, I wish you could have this preset. This is it without it. See everything's reflective. And with it. 
I'm not really showing it off as, as stark as it is. I hope you're seeing it. But that's the idea. Let's try it on this leather really quick. And the leather is not going to make as much of a difference as that one did. Oh. One thing that will really show that off, though, is if I add the reflectivity uh, of a reflectivity plane, reflection plane on the mud ground, uh, it'll really pick up the sky. I'll, I'll show you guys. <laughs> I definitely talk way too much. That's why I have a hard time fitting everything I want to say into five minute tutorials. I don't know why I put the diffuse in there. I actually just want the normal and the glossiness. So, copy this, channels, new, paste, on, go. Normal gloss. And I did forget to talk about this. We, we, we said we were going to manipulate this and create a version 2. And what I'm going to do is make an even stronger contrast here. So I use levels, it's just kind of cramping the amount of different variations of gray and black. I don't know how to explain it, but visually you can see it. Let's try something like this, where like still pure white, and then I don't want the mud to be very reflective at all. That's what I think really brings the effect out. Now I'm going to save this as V2. And now let's load them both in. So first, let's take the leather. And the leather's not going to make a huge difference, I'm pretty sure. So this is, I, th I talked about this in my other tutorial. This is how you can really see what your reflection map is doing. Your color glossiness in this map. If you overwrite it to black, then then you can really see how it's reading that map. And you know, it barely did anything in this case. So, some materials aren't probably worth the effort to get that glossiness map in it. Some are very much worth it. And I can't wait to show you guys some more. I just happened to pick this leather one and it's, it's not a huge deal. If you really got up close to it, this is reflecting it more accurately. I think it's not in the crevices now, whereas it was before. Anyways, let's try our new variation here. I know this will make a big difference. V2. There we go. Now the mud is dry, more dry, and the water is more wet. I mean, more reflective, that's what I mean. Now, let's take a look at these materials with some effects on. That really makes them shine. So, get the sun right on it, like right there. Yeah, I'm not too impressed with the leather, honestly. It, it takes a lot of to get the leather to look just right. But let's let's try something looking at the ground here. Get a shot looking at the building here. I'm going to add a reflection plane. And this is going to make all the difference here. So, add that reflection plane down here. And now you really see it, I think. Okay. So, That's the idea, that's how it brings substances into Lumion. And a little extra I couldn't help but throw in there. I can't wait to get more into the details about this. I just wanted to get this out there and I wanted to get my first draft out there and uh, here's to hoping that next time yeah. things will be a little more organized and I won't have my son right here yeah. as I'm trying to talk or cats jumping up on me. Um, and so yeah. substance into Lumion. There's really a lot of power 
and a lot of these materials. Let's, I'm going to take a look. I'll just spend a second and take a look at some of these other ones. I mean, the metals are just incredible on here. Look at this antique bronze. So, all that imperfection and reflection that's shown right there in the roughness. Just inverted glossiness. The shinier version. These really come through and. And as I mentioned, you could export as high as 8K. So there's just a high resolution, high fidelity materials that we can have in everywhere. Usually what happened before, before I was introduced to Substance Source, I had a couple high quality materials here and there, and a couple other ones where I just had what I had. And there was you know, 512, I had some materials that were like 6,000 by 6,000, and some were just like 512 by 512 because it's just what I had but they really have a little bit of everything in here lots of ground covers very beautiful materials and, there we go. and these are all controllable almost all of them the woods show incredibly in here it really grabs the detail of the grain and the reflectivity I'm very impressed with the woods that I've been able to use anyways that's going to wrap up my very first live stream on how to use substance materials in Lumion. I hope this helped out. I'll try to make sure to get those links in the description. I know this isn't on my main, my main channel and I've linked people to come to this. This is coming to my main channel as soon as I figure out how to get this more professional. You know, maybe I'll have a webcam of myself. I haven't actually done like a face reveal or something. And I apologize for delays in the in these tutorials. Materials are probably the most my favorite thing of all time. So as excited as you would think I would be to make these things, the pressure is just insane because for one thing, I'm always learning. I am always learning. I just realized my stream's off. I'm always learning more and more and I keep changing my mind on how to do this and it's kind of dumb and I've got myself out of the habit of making these tutorials and I've been crazy busy which has been giving me more experience to learn about using these and more things keeps changing but I think I have a really cool idea how to do this now uh, and it's gonna be really fun visually and it's gonna be a little lighter on the words and that's the idea is the advanced tutorials are still gonna be there but I'm trying to fit some small things in there like People have asked me, how do you animate a crane? Like, it's so easy. I would love to just show that, but I don't have time to make a full one. But if I have these short clips, or I do more live streaming, I should be able to get those out quickly. I've been seeing some other channels on YouTube. There's even another guy who's doing some Lumion tutorials. I'm like, yeah, I just need to be doing this. There's, I don't want to brag, but there's so much crazy little tiny crap I know about Lumion that very few people don't know and other things people want to know are things I've struggled with and I've been in everyone's I've been in your guys' shoes people who are brand new to all of this I'm not talking to people who already know this stuff <laughs> I came in knowing like nothing and had to figure this out by myself what the heck is an alpha channel I just got so mad I'm like why is it called an alpha channel anyways I've gone through all that and I got it now and I would love to share it and I think live streaming is going to be the way to do it. And I'm just rambling. See, guys, I'm not this robot that has these perfect lines <laughs> that I say. I'm really just a, I'm just like a, I'm just some nerd who just loves Lumion. And I think it'll be cool seeing, sharing this with you guys. And I, like I said, just rambling. I'm going to finish this up. Um, these will be coming to the main channel very soon. This is the first test. I thought live streaming was going to be super simple, but it was a little more complicated than I thought. Especially trying to manage all this. So, until next time, guys. Thanks for watching. I, I know there's some catchphrase on my other ones I used to use. You guys are all.